This is Kelly Wayne Patterson. It's the one we have is case number one two four seven seven eight five A and B. And then the one for Mr. Langford. Hey, Lisa, did we get the community service from Mr. Langford on the other one? The one two three five one five six A. He told me he was going to fax it. He did. Do what? Will you call Mr. Langford and ask him what's going on with that? So I have Mr. Stubbs' motion to amend. I'm sorry, Mr. Stubbs' motion to dismiss. The city's motion to amend. Just real brief. I will let you both know that I talked to the chief judge. Uh, the chief judge suggested that I not take it to the bar, that instead I call former bar counsel, who I spoke with, and it's interesting because the motion by Mr. Stubbs, which caused me concern, alleging perjury, says that it is only perjury if I allow the city to amend the complaint. But it's not perjury unless I allow it, which is interesting. So, this is what I would... Hey, can I explain that, Your Honor? Let me finish. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry. I can't see you, okay. so... You can't? Can you see? You don't have me? It's a blue screen, Your Honor, that says courtroom five. Can you guys see what's going on with the camera? Because, see that right corner? Can you click that right corner on there? You see on the right corner here? See if you can click that camera, because the camera is supposed to be on. My thing, I see you, but for some reason my camera is blacked out, and I don't know how to use YouTube. Um, video conferencing. Whoops. Ah, crap. Welcome to Blue Jeans. Does it start with nine? To connect. If you're a participant, press pound or hash now. If you're the mo Uh, no, Your Honor, but I can hear you again. Yeah, that's not me. Yeah, I tried to switch to the bridge, and it hung me up. Let me see if camera controls. You don't have anything on the camera. It shows that it's blocked for some reason. Um, let me see if we can get the bridge on here. It's okay. I, I just want you okay. to understand. I can't read what you're saying, and so if I speak, I'm not trying to interrupt you. Okay. I, well, then sometimes you pause. If you don't mind. Sometimes you pause. If you don't mind, then what? What? This is what um, previous counsel said. Previous counsel said that if Mr. Stubbs believes that the city's actually committing a crime. He has a duty to report him to the bar. So he said, it's you that has a duty to report him to the bar. And then they responded that if the motion gets filed and I allow them to amend the, the complaint, which allows the motion, then the city has a motion. I, I'm sorry, the city has a duty to file a bar complaint because Mr. Stubbs is alleging criminal activity by way of the city. So what Bar Council told me is, I don't have a duty to report either of you. You both, if you truly believe this, have your own duty to report. And so based on that, I did not take it to the bar. Now, what were you going to explain? 
Okay, so, Your Honor, the part about the perjury, no, first of all, it's not in my motion to dismiss. It's in my opposition to amend. Correct. In and of itself, a motion to amend is not attested under penalty of perjury. It's just simply a motion to amend. However, if you were to grant that motion to amend, then a new complaint would be filed. That complaint, pursuant to NRS, is attested. And so if there is an allegation against Mr. Patterson in that complaint that the city knows is not true, that is when the perjury would happen. And so that only happens if you grant the motion to amend, and then they actually amend the complaint. Exactly. And that's what I thought I said. I thought I said that if I allow them to amend the complaint, then you're making the allegation of a criminal offense. Yes. Now, additionally, Your Honor, it's important that these are two separate things. The city filed their motion to amend as their opposition to my motion. There is a motion to dismiss for vindictive prosecution that was filed, which, by the way, is actually unopposed. They have not opposed it. There is no opposition. There's no facts, no law, nothing that they've opposed. That has to be done first. And then if you do not grant that, then it would go to their motion to amend, because if the complaint is – if that particular complaint is dismissed because of prosecutorial misconduct, which is what my motion – my original motion is, then that's moot anyway, and we don't even get to that part. City, what is your response to the fact that that was never addressed? Your Honor, I believe this court had addressed it on day one when Mr. Stubbs had come in here and talked about vindictive prosecution. I believe you had indicated that that motion was denied, the whole vindictive prosecution. No, what Mr. Stubbs said was he was going to move to dismiss because of lack of probable cause and vindictive prosecution. I said I would deny it, and he said without hearing anything, and I said, well, if it's lack of – because I remember this. I said if it's lack of probable cause, the statute says a complaint under oath is probable cause. Is that your understanding of how that went down, Mr. Stubbs? Not exactly, Your Honor. Very close. I didn't – at first, I believe what I said is that – is I would be moving for attorney fees, and Your Honor said I have never granted those. I would not grant that. That was part of it. And that was the central issue, and then I mentioned the probable cause, and you said that the case law you saw said that there was probable cause, and I said there's more to it, and so then you invited me to file the motion, which I did. Correct. And we set a briefing schedule. That's close. We're both close. I think if you – Good. Everything you said and everything I said, because I did leave that part out. What you – my understanding was I'm going to move to dismiss lack of prosecution. I'm going to move for attorney's fees, and I said, well, I'm not – I'm going to deny it, and you said without – the justice – what the district court said, and I said, well, if you're moving for attorney's fees for lack of probable cause, the complaint is probable cause. Besides that, we're still on the motion. The motion to dismiss is for vindictive prosecution and lacking probable cause. Yes. So, Your Honor, with respect to the probable cause, the complaint was originally signed by another deputy in our office. Mr. Orsinelli. Okay. So my motion to amend did not add anything to the complaint. It, in fact, deleted language from the complaint. Mr. Stubbs is alleging that even with the deletion of that language, that the city is still filing a false complaint, and none of that is true because the language in the officer's report is what's reflected in the complaint. Did you see the video? I did see the video. Okay. And I also stand by the fact that that language is in the complaint for the reason that my colleague kept it in the complaint. So our office has reviewed the report. Now, I don't know if Ms. Orsinelli reviewed the video, but I reviewed the video, and I believe this is 
about count A? Neither of you really addressed count A, right? The bicycle fell into the traffic laws? Your Honor, it would not be proper at this point for me to do that. There's a specific statute for the motion, the motion that I filed that makes it timely to file it at right now. What we have to do is we have to look at the face of the complaint. And if taken true, the face of the complaint would be a crime, then it is proper to go to trial to determine that. What makes this different is there's lack of probable cause, not because of the facts that are alleged, right, but because what's alleged is not a crime. You can't have probable cause if what's alleged is not a crime, and that is the focus of the vindictive prosecution. So you're saying obstructing a public officer is not a crime? To wit, obstruction of public officer, to wit, by not giving additional information besides his name, is not a crime. According to the United States Supreme Court, the Nevada Supreme Court. I got that part. I got that part. But it's by refusing to obey the officer's commands and go to the front of the patrol vehicle. Correct. Okay. That part, if true, would in fact be a crime. However, there were two parts. And the second part is the basis of vindictive prosecution motion. There are two parts there. And so he's been, it's alleged that he's done two things that separately would both be an obstruction charge. Right. The second one is vindictive prosecution and prosecutorial misconduct to move forward. Right. But the second one, once you gave them notice that that's actually not a crime and they amend it, how is it vindictive prosecution at that point? Well, the problem is they didn't. Your Honor, I gave them notice in May. They still pursued the charge. They told me file the motion. I drafted the motion. Before I filed it, I sent them the motion and said, please do not make me file this motion. I begged with, begged them. And they said, file the motion. So, in fact, according to the case law that I cited, them simply filing that complaint triggers vindictive prosecution. Now, the proper thing is for me to bring it to their attention and allow them to fix it. Then if they do not fix it and they still move forward, that is when it is solidified for the prosecutorial misconduct. They made me go through all these hours. They made me go through all of this, even though I showed them it was not a crime. They made me do all of this, which should not have happened. He's been vindictively prosecuted. Now, according to the case law, that charge, the entire charge that involves vindictive prosecution must be dismissed as a constitutional violation. This would be different if they had alleged two separate, in two separate charges, obstruction for A and another count obstruction for B. They included it all in one. And because they included all in one, the entire obstruction must be dismissed. Now, they now move to amend. And since they've seen the video and since I've given them the case law that says, says that it's the Ninth Circuit says it's not even probable cause to delay obeying coming in front of a police car, especially if you are invoking First Amendment rights. There's there's an on point case that that actually defeated police officer immunity, qualified immunity, because the Ninth Circuit says it doesn't even meet the probable cause standard. And it's well established. If that doesn't meet the probable cause standard, we're going to be at a vindictive prosecution again. Because if your honor, if for one thing, if your honor allows us to amend this complaint, OK, or allows them to, then not only I'll go to the bar with with what's going on, because I know he knows different and I've given him the law. OK, but then we have specific case law that says what's being alleged is not probable cause. I then have to file another vindictive prosecution motion because they know it's different now because of because of what they know. So now we're going to be doing this all over again. I've cited and I even attached the emails 
to where I instructed Attorney Ruggiero of the Ninth Circuit binding case law that says that what he's alleging does not even meet the standard of probable cause. Counsel? These are issues of fact, and it appears to the city that Mr. Suggs is trying to adjudicate this case by email and not by trial, which is where the issues of fact are to be determined by Your Honor. I understand that he cited a Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals case, but that case, he's conflating the two obstruction issues that were in the original complaint. He's saying that the portion that was deleted, which is on the motion to amend, is where his client has his constitutional rights, and that he delayed in complying with the officer's request. The first portion of that, where the officer is asking him to go to the vehicle, that is not the portion of the obstruction that that case applies to. Where is the obstruction? The obstruction is when he fails to go to the front of the vehicle when the officer asks him a number of times. And that was included in the original complaint, and that is the obstruction charge in the amended complaint. What Mr. Suggs is trying to do with this court is to argue the facts of the case. If this court wants to hold an evidentiary hearing on these issues, that's fine. We can bring in the video. We can show. Well, the video is attached, and I haven't actually reviewed the video. I don't know which video you're reviewing. Well, didn't he send you an attached video? He sent you a copy, too. And it was the video where the officer said, please step in front, and he never said he wouldn't. He'd just taken off his gloves and his hand. He said, I've asked you nicely now. Step in front. And there's more to that, Your Honor. That's what I'm asking is, is there more than what I just saw in the video? Because all I saw. Absolutely, Your Honor. There's the portion where he's trying to manipulate his handlebars, where he has a video trying to get the video of the incident. He also asked him once. Why is that? Because it's a delay in complying with the officer's instructions. But doesn't the law say that even if a delay and they comply, I mean, isn't there a law that, I mean, what did it do, like 10 seconds? But I understand that, Your Honor. And if the court is leaning towards granting the motion to dismiss the complaint, then that's fine. But the city will still maintain that the argument is a factual argument and something that this court should be reviewing in a trial setting. Okay. Your Honor, may I? Yes. This is not an issue of fact. The facts are completely undisputed. Everything he said, we'll even let that on the record without any witnesses. The facts are in the video, and everything he said is true. McKinney v. Nielsen, 1995, Ninth Circuit. There is no probable cause for obstruction when a suspect simply delays compliance. Mr. Patterson's delay was a total of 50 seconds. And it was adjusting his gloves and included two First Amendment activities. Number one, under Fortas v. Seattle, that's another Ninth Circuit case. There is a First Amendment freedom of press right to videotape police officers in public on performing their official duties. And then number two, he was asking questions, and he was verbally challenging. Under City of Houston v. Texas, a 1987 case, which, by the way, has been cited tens of thousands of times. It is one of the strongest laws out there. Mr. Patterson would have even had more rights to delay and annoy the officers to some extent. He didn't do that. All he did was verbally challenge, and it took a total of 50 seconds. He had 100% right to do all of that. So what Your Honor said, you're actually quoting from McKinney v. Nielsen, Ninth Circuit case. It is strong case law that what they're alleging is not a crime. 
In fact, he is properly exercising his constitutional rights. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to criminally prosecute him for properly exercising his constitutional rights. That is not an issue of fact. That is an issue of law that upon motion must be decided by the court before trial. Because we have to hash out the constitutional issues. And this should have never moved forward. The vindictive prosecution laws are in place exactly for this reason. If there is a statute or a constitutional right that is being exercised, and the prosecution is prosecuting them for exercising those rights, the United States Supreme Court created vindictive prosecution to wipe that out completely and say, no, you are not allowed to prosecute people for properly exercising their rights, whether statutory or constitutional. The city maintains that it's not, the city is not prosecuting this case for any vindictive reason. The city has decided to file the complaint in this case for the video that was provided and the officer's report where it was included. Do I have a, let me ask this, did you have anything else outside of the video that I was provided? I'd have to review that video, Your Honor. I would prefer you do. Because I have to tell you. Your Honor, there is one piece of evidence that we're not discussing. I'm not sure there's anything illegal from what I saw on the video. If I could turn it on, I'll review it. And I'll let you know if there's more because I know what I watched. Because if there's anything else outside of the video. I know what I watched in this case. And if this is Mr. Patterson's video, then that is not the video. It's the one he copied that you sent him. It's the officer. It's the officer's dash cam. That was provided in the supplement. The last filing, the supplement that was filed on August 10th, we found it in the 149 videos. And it's the officer's body cam that shows it. You have the supplement? I'm pulling it up right now. And it's the last, was it the last one, Mr. Stubb? Because there were like four things on the, it was the very last video on the supplement. Yes, I put everything together for, just for ease, right? But it's Exhibit 7. It's Officer Salazar's April 14th, 2021 body cam video. It's like two minutes. But there were, but there were. She ends up. This is the video. There were like four videos on there or something, or two videos. And what was it published in? You're talking about Exhibit 7? Yeah. I have it here, so if the court wants to publish. No, I've seen it if you want. No objection. And this is the video that I was talking about. I'm asking if there's anything in addition to that video. There is not. Your Honor, there is another piece of evidence. Officer Salazar's report, which is in that disc as well, specifically says that Mr. Patterson complied. It said at first he didn't, and then she says Mr. Patterson complied. And so it's both in the video and it's described by the officer herself. And, Your Honor, I need to point something out. Vindictive prosecution has nothing to do with the mindset of the prosecutor. Most vindictive prosecution is done through negligence and not through specific intent to vindictively prosecute. And the United States Supreme Court specifically addresses that, and it's in my motion. Jenkins, or was that Putin? No, no, it wasn't Jenkins. It was, if I could just pull it up, Your Honor. It was Goodwin, right? Yes, I believe it was Goodwin. It says it does not matter that no evidence is present that the prosecutor had acted in bad faith or with malice. So this is prosecutorial misconduct, but the misconduct that I'm alleging here is actually negligence. Once I show them that the acts are not illegal, it is their duty. It is their ethical duty. It is their constitutional duty to immediately dismiss 
And then we could deal with the traffic charge. But didn't you? They violated that duty by making me spend the hours to file this motion. This shouldn't have happened. None of this should have happened. I showed them United States Supreme Court law, Ninth Circuit law, binding precedent that is clear. But Mr. Stubbs, can there be a difference in opinion of what the delay means, right? So all three of us could watch this video, and all three of us can have a different opinion on what the delay was. And, Your Honor, that doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, is that if you delay for only a short time, no matter what the reason, for a short time, and this is according to McKinney, and let me tell you about those facts, then it is not probable cause. We're talking 50 seconds here, right? Now, there's the next step of why did you delay. And there could certainly be a different opinion of why the delay is there. But the time here at 50 seconds is so short that according to the Ninth Circuit, it cannot be probable cause. And that makes sense, Your Honor, because people are real people. They have to process information. You don't know exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it. They're now confronted by an officer, and, you know, they have to. Let me interrupt you. At this point, your motion to dismiss is on the B count. Yes, it's only the B count. The A count is the traffic count. And it is not proper for me to file the motion. There is no avenue for me to file the motion for the A count. If you dismiss the B count, we just simply set it for trial, and we have a traffic trial. Because I cannot in good faith ethically file this motion on the A count because the complaint is written in a way to where, if true, that would, in fact, be a crime. So that's something that is a question of fact that should be saved for the proper venue, which would be trial. And the city still submits that there are issues of fact, which Your Honor has just pointed out, as to the length of the delay and you said something else. But those two issues as to what a delay is and the length of the delay, we could have difference of opinion as to what those are and why the city has decided to file the amended complaint. Those issues should be adjudicated at trial and not. And, Your Honor, I just want to add, Mr. Stubbs. Yes. The length of delay is not in dispute. It's on video. It's time. No, I know. There is no dispute as to the length of the delay whatsoever. Anything else you want to add? Solely on that. It's not a crime. Anything else you want to add, city? No, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to actually, like in my 20-some years of practice, I've handed down a written decision like four times. But I'm going to put one together on this, on the B count. So let's do a three weeks because I'm out of town for a week of it and then I'm gone too. So if we can put this actually for decision and then we'll set it for trial either on the A count or the A and B count, depending on where my decision comes out. How does October – can you look at my calendar to see if I'm here October 6th? No, let me look on my calendar. Your Honor, may I point out one last thing? Sure. There is no opposition, no facts, no law, nothing. As presented by the city, they had ample opportunity. I don't know if they even looked up the laws. But with vindictive prosecution, they did not oppose it. This is an unopposed motion for vindictive prosecution currently because they did not present anything to the court. Yeah, you said that. You said that. That was like the first thing you said when we went on. It was like the first thing out of your mouth. I say a lot of things and don't remember, Your Honor. Okay. I'm trying to look at my calendar for October. It'll be a morning. It'll just be for handing down a decision and trial setting. But that's fine. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Stubbs. Thank you, Mr. Stubbs.
for the A to B setting, just the A count for the A to B count, but then uh, I um, hear the 6th, so we can do October 6th at 9.30. Uh, Your Honor, I have a, I have a child care issue. My, my wife is visiting her sister in Europe during that time, and so that's a time when I have um, full responsibility for, for all long? the kids. If we for could, how long? Uh, if we could do it, uh, I, I believe the, the 20th would be fine, October 20th. Uh, She's, get, she's got two weeks in Switzerland and Italy. I'm not, look, I'm going to just, that gives me more time to, to work on, you know, um, maybe Mr. Nadig could work as my law clerk. If, if we can do this by blue jeans, Your Honor, it would be just fine because then I don't have to travel it's be a real quick down to, La, it's be a real to Las Vegas. Thing, so let's just do it the 20th at 930. Uh, wait, okay. wait, and no, I, no, we can't, we can't. I forgot I'm out of town. Sorry. Um. So you're available after the 20th? Yes, the, the 20th is just fine. No, but not for me. Um, yes. I won't get back till the 28th. I, I am not available on the 27th. Let's do the I, I am available November how about, 3rd. How about the 26th? You said you're available November 3rd? Um, yes. It, the, the problem, Your Honor, is that I'm in my master's program right now, and so I, I set my school schedule so that uh, Wednesdays are open when? to where I can travel. Okay, so what? So what? The Wednesdays are great. Wednesday, the 27th works? Um, that, that actually does not work because there's actually a choir performance I have to sing at. Oh my but God. November 3rd works just fine. November 3rd I'm so works sorry, Your Honor. No, no. <laughs> I just, it's like, look, you private counsel, you want to go to school, you want to take care of kids, whatever. How about November 3rd at 9.30? Um, that is fine, Your Honor. All right. It says my, my, my uh, calendar says there's an election. Is there an election the day before? What's um, November, November 2nd, I believe it's the local elections, Your Honor? No, I don't think so, because this is this year. All right, I'm putting it on November 3rd at 9.30. If I get the darn thing done before then, I'll, uh, I'll just put on calendar because there won't be argument. It'll just be my decision. So November 3rd, 9.30. Thank you. Uh, decision. All right. That should be it, right? Thank you. I'm hanging you up. Thank you very much. Sure.